So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, thank you. Oh, um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that Mr. Ravi Shankar does not have to start me uh, to stop me. So I got my timer on my iPhone going. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to my colleagues and counterparts at Impeta and SEAI uh, for inviting uh, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and myself uh, to join you today and to provide an overview presentation of FDA's regulations uh, in the seafood industry. So I have uh, the undaunting task of uh, communicating to you in 20 minutes all of the U.S. regulations addressing seafood. Are we all ready for it? Okay, no, of course not. Um, but I did want to say it's going to be, I think, a, a very productive presentation. But for me personally, I also want, I'm going to share uh, a lot of different aspects of the programs that we work on here in India. I'm going to give you an overview of our office. But before I do that, um, can I actually just look around the audience? Uh, and I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. So who is from a seafood company today? Can you just raise your hand? Seafood companies, seafood processors, farmers. Okay. And who is from a, an Indian uh, governmental organization? Okay. And who is from a, an academic institution? And who did I not cover? Okay. <laughs> I'll come and find out. I want to know who those groups are. So thank you very much. So obviously, let's just take that example. So the audience has, there's a lot of different folks here in the audience. Um, my colleague, uh, Panka Japanda, who joined me this today, we deal with a lot of different stakeholders in India. So the U.S. Food and Drug Administration uh, has four offices globally. Two are country specific and two are geographic specific. So we have offices in China and India and then we have uh, regional offices in uh, Latin America and in Europe. Um, so for China and India specifically, uh, look at our agency's name, Food and Drugs. So those two countries supply a large amount of the food and drugs that are exported from those countries to the United States. Um, we're based in New Delhi, so we work in the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi. Uh, I've been in this position for the last three years, so I've been very fortunate to get to know a lot about India and specifically about the India seafood industry. Um, our primary goal uh, and our uh, one of our primary missions here in India is to work with our stakeholders and that's both the government entities and the industries with which we work to promote the safety of the food products and drug products exported from India to the United States. So I, as I look around the room, I know I've uh, met a lot of you here in India. Uh, that's part of our outreach in terms of promoting educational overview of, of the seafood, regula well, seafood regulations and food regulations from the United States. Um, the other part, we also do, we have full-time uh, food and medical product inspectors here in India and those individuals go to the different companies and inspect their facilities to ensure compliance with US laws. So what I'm going to do today uh, this is actually, um, so we of course work on many different types of outreaches and, and overviews and programs. This is a new presentation that we've actually uh, or collaborated with the Demos, um, Demos Global, Global Group, uh, specific, specifically uh, Tanya Martinez, and so I'll, I'll go at the end, give her a little credit on that. So we, we're rolling out this new training module, and um, as I look at my time already, we're, we're going to, it's basically divided into three parts. One being the overview of the U.S. legal functions, two being specifically um, how we uh, regulate seafood products, and then part three was to focus on the differences of the Food Safety Modernization Act and how that interplays with the seafood HACCP regulations. My goal today, I think, is to leave you with a couple of things that you can take away that you can remember from this discussion of how, what specifically is the U.S. Uh, regulating seafood and what are some of the 
more important requirements for companies that are um, manufacturing seafood products and exporting them to the United States. So let's, um, much like India, um, U.S. legal system is based on a series of laws and statutes both from the federal level and at the state level. But primarily for your companies that are exporting from India to the United States, you're going to be dealing with the federal uh, legal regime. And in the United States, uh, regulations of the seafood industry are shared between several different U.S. agencies. Um, and in specifically with those, there's different types of market clearances and import requirements as well as the fact that your company may be subject to uh, seafood inspections. So for, uh, for the Food and Drug Administration, um, we uh, basically um, any importers of food products intended for introduction into U.S. commerce, they're responsible for ensuring that the food is safe, sanitary, and labeled according to U.S. requirements. And that really goes at what the heart of what the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, our goal here in India. Again, we're working with companies to ensure that the food that is produced is safe, uh, sanitary and again labeled so that individuals that are going to consume those products know what the products are and can do so in a safe way. Um, you know we actually get a lot of different questions that have uh, and I'll actually leave you I was actually going to start my presentation by giving you our uh, the India office email address I'll do that at the end of this presentation but one of the things we always are asked is what what is it we have to do to export products to the United States. Can we get, uh, what kind of, when do we get certified? How do we get approved by the FDA? So just to be very clear, the FDA does not approve companies to export to the United States. So the, lar the, the most important regulations you can remember is registration and prior notice. So when we go through these slides and we're trying to think of things to remember, registration, prior notice. So what, what registration requirements? So anyone, any company exporting food products to the United States must register with the Food and Drug Administration. That serves several different purposes and the primary one is so that we know who is export who is the responsible for food being imported into the United States the second is prior notice and that's so that we know what food commodities are coming into the United States so it's more of a notice and informational perspective now that being said um, even though you're there's no pre-approval all companies that sell products to the United States are are required to comply with U.S. food regulations. So the food that you're offering uh, in the different commodity areas must satisfy those requirements. Um, also, an, a, another key takeaway, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, we do not have a if you will, like a uh, any kind of trade promotional role. And that is also with regard to our role here in India. We are specifically a science-based organization. Uh, we are, our role is primarily to ensure the safety of the food uh, being exported to the United States or that's being produced in the United States. So there's no difference in that, we, there's no differentiation between food that's being imported and food that's being produced in the United States. All of those products have to comply with the same laws. Um, so, uh, FDA is primarily responsible for the U.S. seafood supply and that's including all the seafood that's, promote, that's produced in the United States as well as imported with the one exception uh, specifically which was a recent development of um, soliloroforms which uh, included in that group is catfish. So we get that question a lot. 
There's also a couple of other regulatory agencies that are just noted here, USDA and uh, the US Department of Agriculture. And as I said, they're uh, responsible for catfish. That's uh, one of their new rules, uh, establishing their inspection program. And the Environmental Protection Agency, which works in collaboration with the FDA in terms of setting different uh, standards for contaminants. OK. so. This is, um, this is a real, it's a pretty uh, robust slide of all the different regulations that may apply to the food products uh, with which your company may be involved. Um, obviously, I'm not going to have time to go into these. This may become, though, as I said, this particular presentation may become one that we uh, either videotape or we engage in, in on different occasions. So there may be an opportunity for us to provide this to you in another means. And at that time, we will go into these particular regulations in much more detail. But I do want to call out one, uh, one thing that we always get a lot of questions about is food labeling. And I, rec and I think just on a basic level, recognizing companies have a lot of requirements that they're uh, forced, that they are required to comply with. Labeling is going to be different in India than it is in the United States than it is in Europe. But as I, you know, as we talk to a lot of different companies, you know, obviously if you're exporting to the United States, you have to, you're expected to comply with those labeling requirements from the United States perspective. So again, um, all of these regulations are uh, contained in 21 Code of Federal Regulations, which I am going to give a very brief overview in just a few minutes. Okay. So, one of the things that um, a lot of companies ask are in terms of marketing names. So I'm not going to have a lot of time to go into this, but there is um, a seafood list. So if you do a Google search for FDA and seafood list and the um, H the internet link is at the bottom. There is um, basically a code by which the US FDA has worked out in terms of what's the name you should apply to the product. And so for a lot of your products, that's going to be pretty straightforward. But here in this category, um, the FDA's preference, they've worked out a code in terms of there's an acceptable market name and a common name. Generally, their preference is for that middle area, which is called the common name, because that differentiates the particular species. But again, I'll let you, this may be a question that you may want to ask me about at the break, but um, there is a designation in terms to ensure that you are able to market your product under the appropriate name in the United States. Um, Okay, so this is really the heart of the issue that, or the heart of my presentation is the procedures for safe and sanitary processing and importing of fish and fishery products. This regulation, which I know you're all familiar with, which is the hazard analysis and critical control points, uh, the regulation was first promulgated or published in 1995. It became effective in 1997. What this... Um, this program basically uh, establishes a set of principles under which seafood processors go through the different stages of the production processes and ensure that they have identified all of the different hazards associated what's, with what's known as a critical control point. And then that they have implemented a procedure to address all of those particular hazards in what's known as a hazard analysis or a HACCP plan or a hazard analysis plan. Um, in addition, another issue that also comes up quite often are aquaculture drugs. And it's important to note that not all drugs are approved for use and specifically you can reference the FDA website to ensure what those approved drugs are. Very importantly is to understand that the detection of aquaculture drugs in fish and fishery products that exceed regulatory limits um, will result in those fish and fishery products being deemed adulterated uh, and subject to FDA refusal. So um, we can, this is another uh, area that we see a lot of, there are certain products that have been rejected from a lot of different countries in terms for specifically for antibiotics. Uh, so this is a this is kind of an overview page uh, with the hyperlink below, and maybe something that again we can talk about uh, if you have questions about that. 
Um, specifically for the hazard analysis and critical control points, um, this particular, it's, this is a, uh, just a kind of an image of the front of this very thick book that is available online that basically gives all the guidance that the United States has in terms of informing seafood processors of the seafood HACCP uh, principles. So it's worthwhile um, both downloading this particular publication from uh, the FDA or actually the FDA has a, a link directly there and it's also just to this is actually good to know our seafood inspectors reference this book as well so what you're get you know it's it's important that the information that you're looking at is what you need to ensure that you're it's the most up-to-date and you're now you're analyzing your processes in the best way possible so this is um, a very critical piece of information for you um, so uh, this this presentation is very um, you know I'm giving a lot of links so ultimately I hope you'll have a copy of this presentation we'll work with you again as I said earlier to get copies specifically of all the additional guidances so let me just move forward to this, I'm going to spend a little bit of maybe a couple of minutes on these two slides. So the difference, um, but what I wanted to get at and what this particular presentation highlights are the differences between, again, FSMA, the Food Safety Modernization Act, and the Seafood HACCP regulation. Because we get a lot of questions from seafood companies. We know FSMA has been enacted by FDA. This is one of the more um, important uh, kind of advances or you know kind of renewals of food regulations in the last 70 years for the Food and Drug Administration. So how does that impact our seafood operations? What I did here is we're kind of we're gonna do a kind of a very high level and very quick comparison because I have like three minutes. So Generally, seafood products in the United States are regulated under 21 CFR 123. This is your very, and, and I always encourage um, everyone, I'm an attorney by trade, so I always, for myself, I go to the law, I go to the regulations, and I really encourage companies to do the same and to make sure, just go straight to the source, and if you have any questions, then follow up with the FDA. So with that 21 CFR part 123, then we had the introduction of 21 CFR part 117, which got into more or less the preventive controls that FISMA, so FISMA made a lot of changes to this particular um, regulation. There are specific regulations that might still apply to your product, you know, being a seafood processor or uh, if you're somewhere in the chain, and that's 21 CFR 1 subpart O, which is the sanitary transport, as well as um, the intentional adulteration rule. So those are rules worth looking to see specifically what are your obligations under those requirements and again we'll we'll provide more information about that. But I wanted to ensure that 21 CFR 123 and 117. So it's a little difficult to go into but it's broken 21 CFR 117. These are the current good manufacturing practices and preventive controls rule is divided into a series of subparts A, B, C, D, E, F. And what I want to focus on on a high level is subparts A, B, and F are really what seafood processors really need to ensure that you're keeping in mind. And that's specifically to ensure that your, um, your training, so that's subpart A, uh, under the, even under FSMA, which does relate into seafood HACCP, you need to ensure that the individuals working at your facility are trained um, and that they understand the different safety, food safety risks and that they can address those risks. Um, under Part B, there's a very um, stressed 
kind of emphasis on allergen cross contact, which does apply to seafood processes, specifically those facilities um, that might have different types of processing at the facility. Uh, it does not apply to facilities that hold raw agricultural commodities, so again, it gets a little tricky in that regard. Um, I think these are probably issues that, again, there could be some questions about, but we'll be offering some different training on this. And then um, records that must be established. And so records, the primary records you're going to want to make sure that you maintain are for the training. So I guess the one thing I'm trying to emphasize coming out of this is ensure that your um, the employees that work at your facilities are trained in your in the different um, seafood um, the, the uh, HACCP principles. And this is uh, a page that we, uh, as many of you, if you want to give me your card following this presentation, um, this goes to our um, preventive controls human food and preventive control animal food uh, courses that we've implemented uh, working with our many of our government counterparts here and different industries and this is to ensure that the companies uh, that you have access to ensure that you have that training that's required under the regulations so with that I'm going to conclude it was a lot to kind of put into 20 minutes um, and again this was my first uh, kind of role at this presentation so thank you for your attention and again if you have any questions and they can't get answered today at the stage, just feel free to meet, uh, to ask my colleague Dr. Panka Japanda or me at any time during the event. So thanks very much.